Welcome back, and we are in Math 45, and we are now doing Section 3.2. We'll be talking about the domain and the range with our functions. So we know that a relation is a set of ordered pairs, um, and usually we say an ordered pair is an xy ordered pair. Um, so we know that all the x values is in the domain, and all the y values is in the range. So for this set down below, we want to find the domain and the range of the following. So the domain having to do with the x values is going to be all the set of all of my x values. So I'm going to have 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 inside of my range. Sorry, inside of my domain. Now for my range, that's the set of y values. So I'm going to underline all of my y values. Notice how 10 is repeated. So we do not put the repeat value. We only write it once. So the range we have 10, 20, 30, and 40. Okay. So it's very important to not have repeat values in your range. So now what we want to do is we'll kind of find the domain of the following functions. We want to make sure that we write our answer in interval notation. Please remember that interval notation goes from minimum to maximum values. And when you either have parentheses or brackets, or a combination of parentheses and brackets, okay? So to find the domain of a function, what we really wanna do is we wanna make sure we pinpoint where the bad values are gonna be, okay? So for domain, if we're trying to find it, find the restrictions. AKA the bad points. So let's think about this. I have x squared minus one. So visually, we know this is going to be like a parabola. So in this case, we actually don't have any bad points. So our domain is gonna be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So here, there are no bad points. All x values are valid. No restrictions. On x values. So that's for part A. Now for part B, we want to be careful. The reason we want to be careful here is that our restriction is going to depend because it's a fraction. So any fraction is going to have a restriction. And that restriction is that the denominator cannot be equal to zero. If I have, for example, 5 divided by 0, that's undefined. We do not want a denominator of 0. So anytime we have a fraction, that's going to be our restriction. So we're going to pinpoint exactly that restriction, and we're going to evaluate that. So we know that 2 minus x is equal to 0, we know that this is going to define our restriction, our problem point. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add x to both sides. So I'm going to get that 2 is equal to x. That means if we're looking at it visually on the number line, at 2, there's a hole. That is the only point from negative infinity 
to positive infinity that would make this entire function undefined. So we have to account for that problem point. So the way we're going to write this answer is going to be an interval notation. So we said this goes from negative infinity to positive 2, union 2 to positive infinity. And this is going to represent our domain. It tells us that the problem point happens exactly at 2. Now, here, whenever I have a square root, we have to think about what happens when we have a square root. Well, I know that when I have a negative number inside, it's going to be imaginary. So you can think that any square root, the restriction is going to be that the inside of the square root, whatever that thing is, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, it's going to be imaginary. So what we're going to do is we are going to look specifically what's underneath the square root. We have 7 minus x. We want to know when that is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and I am going to subtract 7 from both sides. That's going to give me that negative x is greater than or equal to a negative 7. And of course, I don't like negative x. I'm going to divide everything by a negative 1. And so x, and remember, whenever I multiply or divide by a negative, it flips the sign of the inequality. So now instead of greater than, it's going to be less than or equal to a positive 7. If I'm thinking about it visually, Here's 0, here's negative 7. For any number that's less than negative 7, I know that I'm going to have the inside of the radical greater than or equal to 0. So in order to describe that, I'm going to write it as, well, my domain. And it goes from negative infinity to negative 7. And because there's a line underneath it less than or equal to, then I know that I should be having a bracket there. Next, when we try to find the domain in the range, we're going to look at it as a graph. So you want to be careful here. So I know that if I'm thinking about the domain, then I know I'm thinking about the x values. So I want to know from where it's the smallest x value and the largest x value. So I can think of it as, oh, here's my x. And this is where the smallest x value is going to be and the biggest x value is going to be. So I know that my domain is going to go from negative 6 to positive 3. Okay. Remember that the domain represents our x values, in case you have forgotten. Okay. Now we want to think about our range values. So here's my range. The range represents my y values. So you want to go from the smallest y value to the biggest y value. So here's the smallest y value going all the way up to the biggest y value. Okay. So I know that the range are my y values. And my range, it looks like it's right here. So that represents negative 6. And it goes all the way up to negative 4. Okay.
I just want to make sure that you guys get that. All right. So that represents the domain and the range. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, don't worry, we still have a few more. So now I wanna represent my domain again. So remember, I'm thinking about my X values. So I see that this is going to be my smallest X value, and this is gonna be my largest X value. So everything in between is fair game. So I'm gonna say that my domain I'm strictly looking at my x values, goes between negative three to a positive two. Notice how at negative three, there is an open circle. Because there's an open circle, it doesn't include it, so I'm gonna have a parentheses. At positive two, there's definitely a closed circle, so that means I'm gonna have a bracket in my interval notation. Now, when I think about my range, I want to think about the smallest y value and the biggest y value. So here's the smallest point and the tallest point. So I know I'm going to go from negative 6 all, all the way up to positive 5. So I'm going to say that my range, which is my y values, it goes from negative 6 all the way up to a positive 5. And here, I have brackets on each end since there is not an open circle corresponding to those y values. And we can do that for C and D as well. So for my domain, notice how this arrow keeps going forever. So it's not just at negative three, negative four, but it keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Same thing here, this arrow keeps going up and over, up and over, up and over, so it's actually gonna be the entire thing. So I know that my domain is gonna go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And my range, because the arrow keeps going down, 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 and I'm going all the way down to negative infinity, and that positive arrow tells me I'm going all the way up to positive infinity. So I know that my range goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And if I'm thinking about the range for part D, well, it looks like this is gonna be the biggest X value it's gonna be. And that arrow tells me it's gonna go all the way down. So now I can say that my domain is gonna go from negative infinity to a positive four. And notice how it's a filled in circle. So I'm gonna have a bracket. For my range, it looks like my smallest y value is here at negative two. And because of that circle there, but that arrow keeps going down and down and down and down and down. So that means my y value is actually gonna go all the way down to negative infinity. So my biggest x y value is here. So that kind of corresponds to my range. So I'm gonna say that my range, the smallest, since it, that arrow here tells me it keeps going down forever and ever and ever, negative infinity. But the tallest it's ever gonna be the highest point is going to be whatever that x value is, but positive three is gonna be the biggest y value. So positive three. So that represents my domain and my range. And I hope that makes sense. Okay. Oops, erase that four with the bracket there. Now, down below, we have a piecewise function. So what this means is you're actually defining a function in different parts. It all depends on the domain. So depending on where the domain is, is gonna represent what function you're gonna be using. For example, it says a cell phone company uses a function below to determine the cost in dollars for gigabytes of data transfer. So here's my cost. And here is my domain. So the problem asks me 
to find the cost using 1.5 gigabytes of data and the cost of using four gigabytes of data. So I'm like, okay, well, at least I know I have two different parts to this equation. So for part A, I wanna find the cost of using 1.5 gigabytes. So that means that my G value is equal to 1.5. Since my G value is 1.5, well, I know that G is represented between 0 and 2. So that's this one. So since my G value here, 1.5 is between 0 and 2, then I know I'm going to be using that first one. So I know that C of 1.5 is equal to 25. So then my cost is going to be $25. Now for part B, it tells me to find the cost using four gigabytes. So now my cost is going to be calculated using 4 gigabytes. So using that 4 gigabytes, I'm thinking, okay, well, that 4 is definitely fails the criteria for the first part. Here, 4 is definitely greater than or equal to 2. Since 4 is greater than or equal to 2, then I have to use that definition that 25 plus 10 G minus two. That's gonna represent my cost. So I'm gonna have 25 plus 10. That G value that I'm plugging in here is four. So I'm gonna plug that into my calculator so I'm going to have 25 plus 10, parentheses, 4 minus 2. And I'm going to get 45. So I know that my cost for 4 gigabytes is going to be $45. Now, for this one, you have to be a little bit careful because now we're graphing. So you really want to make sure that you have your data points. So we're going to think about graphing two different functions on the same graph. Just think of them as completely different. So for our first fraction, let's think of that as the first one. So I know that I'm thinking about y equal to x plus 1. Notice this is only defined when x is less than negative 2. So I can draw myself a little chart to kind of help myself out. Because it's no line underneath it, x is strictly less than negative 2. I can think of negative 2, but I specifically know that it's going to be an open circle. because there's no line, it's not less than or equal to, it's strictly less than. So let's think about some other values that are less than negative two. Um, let's say like negative five and maybe negative seven. So I'm gonna plug that into my calculator. So let's think about this, negative two plus one. That's gonna give me a negative one. Negative five plus one gives me a negative four. And negative seven plus one gives me a negative six. So here I have some points that I can plot. So remember, I have my x and my y axis. So I'm gonna have negative seven, here's x, and I'm gonna go down to negative six. So there's my first point. I also have negative five and negative four so there's my second point. And of course, negative two, negative one, but be careful, remember that was my open circle. So at negative two, negative one, I have an 
open circle. And so my line looks like this. And this is definitely linear. Now I'm going to draw my second equation. So that's going to be the bottom one. So for the bottom one, I know that I have y is equal to a negative 2x minus 3. And my criteria is that x is greater than or equal to a negative 2. So if that's the case, I'm going to be making some points for x and y. I know negative 2 is going to go in there. And I know because there is a line underneath it, it's going to be a closed circle. Since it's or equal to, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So some values that are bigger than that, maybe like zeros there, and maybe positive 2. So when I plug those values into my calculator, negative 2 times negative 2 minus 3. I'm going to get a positive 1. If I plug 0 into this equation, well, negative 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3, I get negative 3. Now, if I plug a 2 in, negative 2 times 2 minus 3 gives me a negative 7. So those are my values. So now I have negative 2, positive 1, and it's a closed, filled-in circle. I also have 0, negative 3, and I have 2, negative 7, which is there. So notice how it's kind of like two different equations on one graph. And it all came because I have two different equations from the piecewise function being defined on different domains. It all depends on the domain. For the first equation, x was less than negative 2. For the second equation, x was greater than or equal to negative 2. So you really have to pay attention to that. For part B, we actually don't have enough time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that one. Instead, I want to go into the behavior of graphs, which is going to be section 3.3, which is going to be in your next video coming up shortly.